<laughs> oh, hey. Thought I'd come to you this morning from, well, the bathroom. What we got going on today is I've got a bad faucet. And let me show what's wrong with it. And then we'll show you how we're going to fix it. Okay, so this is the faucet that came with the RV. And uh, normally it's, it's, it's okay. You know, it's a, a camper grade. <laughs> but uh, it has two big issues. Number one, the outlet spout is too close to this back wall. So when you have the water on, you can't even get your hands under, you know, you know it's up against it. So you can't even get your hands under it to get your hands wet. So that's a, that's a bad juju. So we don't like that. And number two, we're developing water. So every morning we come in, we've got water leaks on the sides. So that means the valving system inside one or two of the handles, the valves, seals have been given out. And uh, we have a pressure regulator on the outside water. So we know it's not that it's just getting too much pressure. It's just developed a leak. So we're going to replace this. And we've already gone to the big box store. We've bought a different one. It looks like this. And we're going to install it for you today. So let's take a gander what we got to work with and we'll get rolling. So it looks like it's pretty cut and dry. We simply have two, uh, two screw on fittings here. This one being the cold is the, is the blue and the hot is the red. It looks like it's got little hand tighteners here that we can loosen it with. We will have to shut the water off outside because there are no, there are no valves underneath the sink to isolate it. So we'll get, a Go outside and shut off the water, and then we'll get to loosen and no sink. It looks like it's just as simple as unscrewing two bolts and uh, installing the new uh, faucet. All right, so here's our new faucet. Bless your bay. As you can see, it's got uh, the spouts points out more. What's well, this bigger? So, should be cut and drive installing this. It's only got two connections at the bottom. Very easy. Let's see what we got. As you can see, it's a smidge bigger than that one. And it'll definitely stick out further. Hopefully it doesn't spray out too far. We'll find out though, I'll stick it in, take a look at it. Should work real good. Now this faucet also comes with uh, the plunger, which goes down in here. That allows you to pull the pull the uh, lever up and down to make your to make your sink stop and go. Uh, we don't like that or don't need it, so I'm not going to put that in. All we're going to do is just install this, and I'm just going to leave that uh, lever off the back of it, and uh, I'll keep that one as a spare in case I ever need one at the house. So. Uh, I'm going to get underneath, undo the water, and get started. Okay, so I've got the water shut off outside. I've opened up the valves to, re to release the pressure so that there's no water in the lines to any uh, grand excess. So that should be dry. Went ahead and put me a towel down underneath the cabinetry. I don't want it to get wet because there is residual, residual water in these lines. So when I unscrew them up top, uh, there will be some water driven. Got me a light so we can see what's going on. And uh, let me get the camera up there and let's get her unscrewed. Well, that was easy. That one loosened up really easy. I can go this direction so you can get a better view of that. Right As you can see, we're getting a little water. That's fine. Little drips. We want to catch it so it doesn't get down in the cabinetry. These cabinets aren't made real great anyway, so any moisture on these this type of cabinetry would not be good. Okay, I'm gonna get the hot water line off now. Come up a little bit 
easier. Now, there's a retaining screw up here. This black washer slash nut assembly. It's one thing. That's what's actually holding the uh, holding on. Let me get that loosened here. Well, that one's a little tighter, but it came off pretty easy. Get the other one on the other side. Okay, this is that retaining nut that screwed on there. It's going a little tight, but I was able to get it off with just my hands. Had to use my right hand, get a little bit stronger, a little better grip on it. But as of now, as you can tell, there is nothing holding that faucet on now. So let's go back up top and take a look at it. All right, so I took the nut, I took the bolts off. Both sides underneath. So right now this one is literally completely loose. Look at that. Kind of look the same. See how the connection is on the bottom? You can tell the quality of a decent size. These are plastic. These are brass. So that tells you one thing right there. Now, so we can put this one away. This thing is very light. I mean, this thing don't even weigh a pound. It is, well... It is what it is. So, let's take a look at the new one. Drop that one in the trash can. Alright, so on the new one here, it does have a tag here. And for once in my life, I decided to read it. <laughs> As men tend to not do. So, actually I'll just tear it off. And basically what it's telling me is, is that uh, uh, do not use plumber's putty. Or pipe dope or any other type of sealing compound on the, on the water inlet or the threads. So what well, it's telling me, number one is telling me is this, um, when I go to screw that on right here, screw the water inlets on here, it's telling me don't use uh, silicone thread tape, don't use plumber putty or anything of that sort. Now plumber's putty, putty usually a plumber's putty would be used along, along here where it actually touches the surface, going around the surface here. And uh, that's where you would put the plumber's putty. That keeps water from being able to go this way. If it was on the countertop, go over here and then go down the hole. And it would rot out your wood right here. But uh, he's saying don't use it. So, hey, somebody who uh, somebody who designed it said not to use it. So, man, it makes it easy on me. Literally, all I got to do is feed this through the hole. Screw, screw these back on because this is what hugs it up against the bottom of the counter. And then uh, th throw it on my hot and cold water. Man, it don't get much easier than that now, does it? So, uh, uh, let me get this thing mounted up. Hold on. Okay, so I, put the, I took the retaining nuts off. So we're good to go on that. This is just the little washer. So we're going to put that washer back on there. Then this turns around. And goes into the two same holes that was there before. Look at that. Look at that. Me likey. Me likey. Now look how much further this comes out so you can get your hands under it. It's a lot higher. Got more than enough room to get your hands in here. Looks like it'll probably spray hard. It'll probably hit about right there in the sink. That looks wonderful. So uh, let's go back down underneath the cabinet. We'll screw on our retain or retainers to hold that hold the faucet itself tight against the cabinet. And then we'll thread it on the hot and cold water lines. We'll turn it back on, check for leaks, and then we'll set it and and we'll get the uh, okie dokie from the wife and uh, see what she thinks. It's looking good. All right. I'm using my left hand outside to hold, 
hold it down while I screw these on. Makes it a little bit easier. I just get that a little bit finger tight on that one. You want to get it too tight, guys. Okay. I'm going up top and I'm just kind of shifting it, make sure it's where I want it. Oh yeah, that's close enough. Just a couple good snug tights. Don't want to move it around. Don't put a wrench on it though. That'll be too tight. You could you could uh, strip out these things or uh, do some damage to it. So those are those are on. So now all we gotta do is put our uh, cold and hot lines to them. It said not to use any putty tape or any any kind of sealant tape so I'm not so let's just move our cold water line over most of them they're all a standard size so you might get one older model or something that would have a different size to screw onto this if they do just go to the hardware you might have to take the faucet with you and uh, to match the sizes up but it's pretty much the same little tip here now that thread didn't want to chase very good so I just kept unscrewing it and screwing it unscrewing it and screwing it and uh, and um, and kept doing that till it finally went on easy and would spin around you do not want to strip the threads on this plastic fitting so uh, if it's if it doesn't spin around about three times easily your your boogering threads so you don't want to strip your threads out especially with this new faucet because it has brass uh it had brass that uh that you're screwing onto and that brass will eat this plastic up if you if you uh, try to chase that thread on there crooked so let me get the hot line on and snug them down They're snug down. I'm going to turn the water on. We'll check for leaks and see what we got. Okay, the water's been turned on. I do not see any water coming down. Usually it'll, it'll leak down the pipe if it's got a leak. So if it's spraying, you know you have a bad problem. Which if it was spraying or coming out really hard, uh, more than likely you you chase the thread crooked and it's and it's boogers your thread up um, Or it's just not screwed on tight at all, but uh, Doesn't look like we have any kind of a leak. Let's take a look up top and see what we got The air out of it Wow, look at that Let's Clear the hot line Done Hope you enjoy it. Hope it helps you out. Let you know that anybody could do this. Very easy. Very quick. If I wasn't recording it, I could have swapped that out in probably 15 minutes. So, uh, hope you enjoy it. Stick around.